So now we're at the point to where, which I didn't film, but new rings are on the pistons. We had to put new pistons in here, which technically are not new. We got a used set of GSR pistons on GSR rods. I feel a lot better because the rod bolts that were in here were not OEM rod bolts. And we got to looking at it. Somebody has rebuilt this motor and they used LS B18, B1, B20 rod bearings on it and they don't sit right. So is what happened. Let me see if I can dig one out. Well, either way, is what happened is this bearing comes out. As you can see right there, this is an LS bearing. It comes all the way out and it's actually ate up on the edges on all of them versus this side, it's inside, which is the way it's supposed to be. So since we actually ordered the right bearings this time, oh, wait, these are the pistons out of that motor. Okay, so this motor was different. All right, it's all making sense now. All right, so these are not out of this motor. These are the new ones, whatever. The old ones are getting thrown away. So, but just to clarify, whoever did this made a mistake. The motor these came out of, these are LS B20 bearings, B18, B20, whatever. These don't work in GSR rods. When you do a GSR rod, which here's our new set. I've already got this one apart. That bearing comes along the edge right here and along the edge right here. It's all in, pushed in. So, but we have a new set of pistons going in. Um, I like doing things a little differently on these setups. So if you look at the rings, the top oil ring, that's the gap there, which these have already been filed. I like turning it to where on the complete opposite side, the second ring is opposite. And then I like taking the top ring and pushing it opposite also. They claim to quarter this way, three eighths this way, blah, blah, blah. But that's the way I've always done it. And I've been pretty happy with the results. So this is the new setup we're going with. We're about to compress them, put them in there. Um, we cleaned the cylinders really well after we honed them. So we need to lube up the cylinders, make sure they're nice and oily. And then we're gonna start compressing these, put our assembly oil on the bottom, drop them back down in there and get ready to torque them down. I do two pistons at a time, turn the crank. Well, two pistons, go up underneath, torque them down, rotate the crank, two more pistons, torque them down, rotate the crank. And then after that, we'll be ready to clean the surface, put the head on. So we are gonna get that going now. So this is what I like using. I like high level zinc. I use pin grade. It's great breaking oil. So I'm gonna use that on the cylinder walls. And I also like to lube the pistons up real good with the rings and everything. So we usually keep this on hand in the shop. Uh, all our motors that make good horsepower, we run pin grade or renegade oil. Make sure that this is all the way tight as you can get it. Now we are using a cheap AutoZone ring compressor. I don't have a drop-in ring compressor in 81 millimeter, which I probably should order one. So as that's tight, you wanna make sure it's level all the way across so it's not, so, which I get lazy and I just tap it. And now it's level across there. Now it's level there. So for assembly oil, I'm not gonna tell you what it is because it's my little secret I've kept for a little while. I learned this from an older gentleman about when I was 18. Uh, he actually helped me put my first motor together. It was a Chevy 350. But we use this for assembly oil. It's super thick, super luby. 
and it actually just works out great. I've put motors together, let them sit on the stand with no oil pan, dry as could be, two years, thrown the oil pan on, fired them up, and one of those motors actually has like 50,000 miles on it now with a lot of daily abuse. So then I'm gonna make this cylinder one now. You gonna set it in there. Let me get a rag. And then I gotta find a hammer. So don't judge me for this. But just to get it done, it's not gonna hurt anything. <coughs> I only have the big mamma jamma. So you wanna lightly tap it. You wanna go around the ring on these ring compressors and tap lightly and just make sure it is flush. And then using the butt end, and on these pistons, there's an arrow that points which way it goes. They always points to the timing belt. I'll put pressure on the ring compressor and tap in the top. That one's in. So we're gonna do this to all four. And then I'm gonna go and put these two in and we'll reconvene on the bottom where I will be torquing them. I'm also gonna answer this phone call. Yo! One eternity later. So one thing I also like to do, so when I'm doing this, I like doing two cylinders at a time. You gotta keep matching cam ca or rod caps. So I put them on a box separated and I do two at a time. So I know that one is going on this side and that one's going on this side. And then that way when I'm under here, as you can see, those two are already in. These are the fun ones because you gotta kinda like finesse it. You gotta drop it down then you gotta turn the crank and get it in the right spot to get the rod cap on. It, it's, it's kind of, nightmare in a way but not too bad so we're gonna go ahead and get the cam caps put the bearings which i left up top and i'm gonna have to get a ladder so let's get to it since you're underneath sometimes you can't really see much and it's kind of hard to deal with let's turn this a little bit more put you a little more under there there we go so you can't really see the numbers and stuff on the side so easiest way to remember the notch side always goes on the notch side so this one is going to be cylinder one so notch on notch that's going to be exhaust side let's go slide up in there i'm going to put the nuts on and this way also works if you want to do a rod and piston motor uh, you can order manly rods, Wiseco pistons, CP pistons, whatever. And you can lift the head and do the same thing if you're just trying to do a budget rebuild. And turn the boost up. So notch on notch. All the assembly lube in there. Notches on the exhaust side. Just gonna wiggle that right up in there if it doesn't jam. There we go. Put the nuts. Mm -hmm. All right, so I have a hard time remembering torque specs. There's a website I go to when I need them. So this is OEM torque specs. They have a K series page, a B series page, such for so on. It's called In the Fast Lane, just the letter N the fast lane so you see right there they have connecting rod bearing caps oem first step on all bearings any b series motor is going to be 14 pounds b16 a2 is 30 b18 b1 b20 is 23 pounds and the b18 c1 which is what we have here is going to be 33 pounds we need to do 14 and 33 we're going to do that now and i like digital you can use a click it if you want this is a compu torque, which is uh, based off snap-on. So we're going to put it 14 pounds. Go ahead and torque everything down.
Now we're gonna go to 33. save the battery dang that turn it did turn you ain't even watching me is you all right so after that's done turn it over with a ratchet as you can see the pump's working but just make sure there's no dragon so just make sure nothing's dragging when you turn it I mean, really supposed to check clearances. OEM for OEM. I've done this several times. It's kind of difficult to check clearances in the car. So, you know, my whole trick is if you turn it over, you don't feel any drag, it's going to be fine. Um, you're going to feel a little drag from the piston rings. I guess doing it so many times over the years, I could tell the difference. I've had to take some apart, rearrange bearings to get it right. But other than that, usually ACL and King, they're 100% on point. Don't have any issues with Honda stuff. Subaru stuff I hear differently. But, I mean, this thing turns pretty good, so it should last forever. So I'm going to go ahead and knock out these other two. Since I explained the first ones. And we're going to get this done. And then we'll prep the surface and put the head back on. Now we're going to put the other rod cats on. So I've got them separated so I know exactly where they go. So the best way to do this, you're going to have to turn the crank. And we're going to want to go counter from where we are right now. And that's going to bring this about right there should be good. And this way show y'all as you can see we can access where the rod caps go and this one's going to be cylinder number three notch on notch so it's going to go this way i'm going to wiggle it up in there a little bit that one's going to slide right on i'm going to grab the nuts because we have them separated on this box left and right and it's going to go oh about to drop a nut so evidently can't do this one-handed i'm gonna set y'all back up and i'm gonna finish up and torque everything down and then we'll switch over to the cylinder head so that is that is the easiest way to put the caps on it is not the easiest way to torque it down so we're going to take the ratchet turn it back the other direction get it lined up right there as I'm leaking oil all over myself and we're gonna torque it down 14 and 33 I always like to double check. So now that that's done, we're gonna clean the windage tray and go ahead and put it on there. And we're also gonna clean off right here. Somebody used a crappy aftermarket gasket. I've had these blow out before and destroy a whole motor. So I use OEM pickup tube gaskets only. 
All it takes is a little razor blade to scrape off the old. All right, so we got brake parts cleaner. We cleaned the tray. Put the tray back up in here. As cheesy as it sounds, OEM part number, gasket. Such a petty gasket, but we know it's the right material. We know it's gonna hold, cause it's OEM. So I look at Doug a lot of stuff. But when it comes to like gaskets and stuff like that, you're supposed to use torque specs. I'm gonna recommend you use torque specs, but I guess I've done so many, I can feel it. But I'm not gonna ugga at the gasket. I'll ugga at the windage tray. All right, that's good to go and ready for the oil pan. Which I think our gasket's a little messed up. We're gonna check. So our gasket's messed up, so we're gonna hold off on the oil pan. We're gonna have to order one. But bottom end's done.